We're back. What's cooling? What's going on? It's mock draft day two, which means round two, round number three. Let's bring some action. But first, we got a recap from yesterday, round number one, which I'll go ahead and put on the screen right after the commercial break. Da, 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 da. No, I'm joking. No commercial breaks. Do you have problems? Do you need this medication? Here are the side effects. Blah, 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 blah. No, none of that stuff. But what's happening? I'll put it up all those things so you can take a look at the first round. And we'll get into round number two. Let's go ahead and kick it out into round number two. Let's begin. Start now with the Arizona Cardinals. Pick number 33. I'm going with Rome Odunze from Washington. I, you know, I was saying at the beginning, you know, my pre-draft process, I'm like, okay, I'm still a little lower maybe on Romo Dunze being a first rounder, but I'm starting to come on board, man. The more I watch Romo Dunze, it's still early in the season, but this guy just knows how to jump up at the right time. His ball tracking's phenomenal, and he's got great acceleration off the line. Still want to see him versus more press physical corners. That's going to be a big thing for him. But I think he's got the physicality enough to get the job done. He uh, he can definitely catch it in tough situations too. And that's where I've been really impressed with him this season. Roma Dunze, now you got yourself an you know, even good weapon. I mean, got a really good rep weaponry, you know, with with Moore, Brown, and now a Dunze in that room for Caleb Williams and company. Woo, man. That should be pretty dang solid in my view. We go on to Cedric Van Brand though here for the Bears, Chicago. They go protect Justin Fields some more. Go get some more offensive line. And they need a center, I feel like, long-term wise. They've been injured. I know that. They've had some injuries. Still, I think that long-term, center is an area that they need to address. And Cedric Van Pran can get the job done. He's still a little bit of work in progress. Sometimes get a little top-heavy, a little hat-heavy. Gets on the lunge, on, gets on the toesies. But I think he has all the power and, and the athleticism to be a really good starting center in the league. We've uh, added in Marvin Harrison, too, and then we also got some defense in Jared Verse. Now we go on to the Green Bay Packers. Tyler Newbin, safety from Minnesota. We're rowing the boat over here to Minnesota, which this player, Tyler Newbin is such a good player, man. He is so well-rounded. I wouldn't say that he's the man coverage guy, but Green Bay, their defense, they don't play tons of man coverage in general. Tyler Newbin's going to be a great zone corner, physical tackler, man, afraid of nobody, comes down. From run support, one of the best in this class at doing that. They need secondary help. He'll be a good combination with Darnell Savage if they bring Savage back. Then we go on to Donovan Jackson here to the Raiders at 36 overall, where I just say offensive line. I felt like he was kind of the best available at this position. Interior defensive line could definitely be an argument here, but I just wanted to continue to build the trenches Fill this out. Alex Bars, you can put Donovan Jackson at left guard, move Donna Parham back to maybe more of a native position over at right guard. And, and now you got your right tackle position, which for a month for maybe he steps up into that role long, long term or they keep, I mean, maybe we'll see about Jermaine Illuminor and he's only on a one more, this is his final year of a contract. I know right tackle could be a need, but Thrayer Munford maybe can hold that position down. So went ahead and went with Donovan Jackson. Xavier Worthy, speed, 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 speed. You look at the, the Carolina offense right now. It's dole, dole, dole. Let's get some speed, speed, speed. That's Xavier Worthy right here, and he's going to be a huge weapon, a super weapon for, no, that's Brock Bowers, but he's going to be a great weapon for Bryce Young. Then we go on to McKinley Jackson from Texas A&M. Defensive interior line. Have you seen it over there at Houston? Yeah, I haven't either. We're going to go and address it here and get a guy who, is, is going to be really good, I think, in the run game. Just got to get a little bit more under control with his gap discipline. But he's a really, really good swipe. You know, he's got that swim move club over where he just kind of swipes off the tackle with initial burst. He's got that five-yard athleticism. Really solid interior player. I think he has some good upside on that interior, which we've addressed with Leatu Latu, Will Anderson. Whoa, man, that defensive line looking ferocious. Kamara Lassner looked great. I watched him in South Carolina. thought he was explosive coming downhill the dude is a ferocious tackler and he's got that vertical speed really a lot of upside here in Kamari Lasner and, and so far this season I've been really impressed with him so I'm moving him up the board and go ahead and get Indianapolis they need secondary really bad Barrett Carter next off the board here to the New Orleans Saints I'm looking at their linebacking core like it's good don't get me wrong Pete Warner and DeMario Davis. DeMario Davis is still one of the better linebackers. However, he is 34, almost 35 years old now, or 34 and a half, something like that. But 
they could look at just addressing this defense for the future. And I think Barrett Carter couldn't play right away. Don't get me wrong. Like, he can play on the line. He could take on blocks, which is something, you know, whereas you were talking about like an Isaiah Simmons comparison, like this guy can take on blocks and be on towards the line of scrimmage. So you can play him as like a, a Sam linebacker early on and develop him into that Demario Davis sort of role or just get some more juice in that linebacking core to pair along with Pete Warner. Then we go into Michael Hall Jr. from Ohio State going to New York, the Giants, the G-Men. They need more interior help with Leonard Big Cat Williams being a free agent. That's what I'm going to do here. Try to get a little bit more interior pass rush to go along with Dexter Lawrence. Blake Corum, next up for the Green Bay Packers. Michigan, the Wolverine, coming here to Green Bay. They just add more running back depth. And you also figure A.J. Dillon. I don't think they're going to re-sign him. It just doesn't seem like they, they're interested with them trying to go after... Um, Jonathan Taylor, so maybe they look at adding a running back here, and Blake Corum is going to be my answer. I feel like Blake Corum is all around the best running back in this draft. Jertavian Sanders here from or going to New England from Texas, Hook'em Horns. They go get themselves a weapon from Mac Jones. They need another weapon. Hunter Henry's a free agent this season. Mike Isecki on a one-year deal. Go and get Jatavian Sanders with his XP. Whoa, somebody's blowing by me, man. Speaking of blowing by me, Jatavian Sanders, he's got that blow by, get you speed. So they need another pass catcher in this offense. Samil Mondin Jr., also very athletic. One of the most athletic linebackers in this class right there with Barrett Carter as the most athletic duo, you know, linebackers in all of college football right now. And of course, it's Georgia and Clemson. But this guy has those tools that I think he could end up even going in the first round, Quay Walker-ish. And uh, we'll get a little adjustment here. There we go. We got a little vibe. So like, let's fix your shirt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. But Samuel Mondin, they don't get me. We're just going at it. Samuel Mondin, junior commercial break. Did somebody say commercial? Samuel Mondin, though, get another linebacker for the future because Levante David is getting a little bit older. And I think he can be a great coverage linebacker with that athleticism and, and coverage instincts he's already shown. Uh, almost had a pick six on Spencer Rattler. This, If it would have been on target, I say it would have been a pick six there at the end of the game. Braylon Trice to the Washington Commanders, formerly of Washington. Chase Young may not re-sign. That's okay. I think Braylon Trice here, pick number 45, is an absolute steal. Somebody that can fill right in for that role and be a quality day one starter with plenty of enough upside to get you rolling on that defensive line. Keep it thriving. Chris Braswell going here to Atlanta from Alabama, keeping it close to home. They get themselves an edge rusher to pair along with Arnold Abiquetti for the future. This guy's got so much speed and burst off the edge. He's coming along, too, with his pass rush tools, which is what I wanted to see. Gave him a, I gave him a second, third round grade in the offseason. Could easily move into the first round. Just want to see more see more of Chris Braswell. Looking, looking strong, though. Coming on versus UCF. Still want to see more, like I said, when you get into the SEC competition. But the tools are all there. And we add another piece on that defensive line. Quinn Ewers going to the Minnesota Vikings. The future for Kirk Cousins. Hey, I feel like this is a good spot to go ahead and take that chance on a quarterback. That's because, look, it is, it, is a, it is a question where you have to start saying to yourself, Minnesota Vikings, we need to think about it to the future. Maybe they do bring Kirk Cousins back. Maybe they don't. And maybe it's a first round need. But right now, I don't think it's all Kirk Cousins. This Minnesota defense needs help, and we're going to continue to try to improve that. I just feel like in this draft class, maybe there's a lot of good value in the second round if we can find one, at least for the time being, in the second round, like Quinn Ewers or Riley Leonard, Jordan Travis, that I think are, are going to be some nice pieces to add in in this spot. Blake Fisher, offensive lineman from Notre Dame going to Tennessee. Is it, I mean, do we need to say much more? They need offensive line. He'll fill right in there for Chris Hubbard or Nicholas petit Fair when he comes back to suspension. Maybe they can shuffle some things around. I think Blake Fisher has a lot of upside. Been a little inconsistent so far this year. Maybe he comes back for another season, still has one more year. I think, you know, at least one more year of eligibility, but he's only like a junior, so he could come back next year. I still like Blake Fisher, though, a lot, and I see him as a potential first-rounder at some point in his career, whether he comes out this year or or next year. But really, really good offensive lineman. Just needs to continue to get a little bit more cleaned up with his technique because I think he's just, you know, some gotten some, you know, minor nitpicks with the getting beat this season. Tommy Eichenberg going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's add in another linebacker into the Berg. What a combination this would be. Him and Cole Holcomb holding it down. Eldon Roberts, a free agent. So go ahead and uh, address that linebacking core. You got a good defensive line just attacking people. Let's hold up that middle of the defense with Tommy Eichenberg. Donovan Edwards. 
you got to figure on Austin, uh, Austin Eckler is a free agent. Do they bring him back? That could be a big question. Well, we're going to go ahead and address it. Donovan Edwards, a guy who can fill into that Austin Eckler role. I know that's tough, but Edwards is probably the best pass catcher in this draft as the running back. He, no joke, could probably be a receiver. He's that good. So we're going to just kind of address that with Donovan Edwards with his speed and burst. A.D. Mitchell going to the Cleveland Browns. Let's get another pass catcher for Deshaun Watson. I'm not saying that's completely their problem right now and Deshaun Watson's problem, but I'm going to at least go in and address adding another skilled position player to help out Deshaun Watson. Hopefully Nick Chubb comes back healthy. Maybe we can add another running back later, but uh, I'm going to go with A.D. Mitchell to help out Deshaun here. Patrick Paul from Houston. Houston, we have a problem. We're going to Los Angeles. We're going to go and take it to the Rams where they need offensive linemen and they need them bad. You got Aldrich Jackson starting right now at, at left tackle. We'll see how he comes along from Iowa. However, they still need offensive line. Let's go snag a prospect here with a lot of tools and traits. Big time length, almost 37 inch arms, something wild. 85 plus inch wingspan. He's a he's a monster out there, and he, I've heard he's played well. I've not watched him this season, but I watched him last year. He needed to clean up some technical things. I thought he got beat inside one too many times, and uh, got a little skinny with his feet. But that'll be coming along with Patrick Paul. Cincinnati's going to go with a running back here. I'm going to take Tra Travion Sander, Travion Henderson. Someone who I really like a lot. I think his his speed and vision is is really good. He got great burst, and someone that you get in there to replace Joe Mixon for the long haul. Maybe help Joe Burrow out, get a run game going, all those sort of things. Not saying that he needs it. Overall, though, Henderson, I feel like he can be a reliable pass catcher. Just a really solid, like can't miss type of running back prospect in my eyes. Maybe not an elite tier running back, but I think if nothing else, you're getting like a Josh Jacobs type of back. Riley Leonard, quarterback, going over to the Seattle Seahawks. He's a developmental guy, and that's why I'm going to go and take a take Riley Leonard here for the Seattle Seahawks. Someone who can sit behind Geno Smith for a season or two, learn, develop. He's got a lot of the tools. I mean, this guy's always breaking away a run, so maybe even just use him in the wildcat formation from time to time while he's developing as a passer. Not to say he's a bad passer. He can go through his progressions and make all the throws. He has plenty enough arm strength, so he's a good developmental prospect to have behind Geno Smith here in the, in the second round. Cooper Beebe, pretty self-explanatory, plug-and-play offensive lineman on one of those guard positions. You're getting older, slash you still have some, some question marks with that offensive line, so let's get somebody who can... Be a little bit nasty in the run game. Help out Travis Etienne a little bit in the road, you know, road grading ability. Zach Zinter here from Michigan going to the Detroit Lions with this pick number 56 overall. And Zach Zinter, he's an absolute stud. He is a he is the best run blocker, I feel like, in terms of angles in this draft class. And uh, he's not 3,222 3, pounds. <laughs> oh, man, but that'd be hilarious. <laughs> anyway, uh, typo. And uh, overall, yeah, um, hey, that's I, I'm not fat shaming. You know, I'm sorry, Zach. I, you, you know, that's a compliment, if nothing else. You're just that powerful in the run game. 3,200. Let's move. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Holy Valentine, Jonah Jackson, free agents. Could also look at a tackle. Maybe, you know, we're going to, maybe a tackle slash guard both options for this Detroit I just felt like Zach Center was the best available at this point Caitlin Bullock oh it's, we got the weight right right okay we got it right 190 pounds and uh, Bullock's gonna help out that secondary be a nice piece Sidney Brown and Caden Bullock I feel like complement each other so so well Caden Bullock with his uh you know insane agility and speed that he has at his size is crazy so he's going to be that patroller and i think you can just have Sidney brown be that hook curl defender um and just make you know make plays do what he does so i think it'd be a nice one-two punch there in that back end for the future trey trey benson gonna add a off or some more offense for this team and trey benson is one of the best bruisers between the tackles and you look at trey benson and what he brings with that break tacking ability in this baltimore offense that's what they need, man. And it sucks that J.K. Dobbins is not able to stay healthy. I thought there was a lot of potential there for that. But they need another running back to help out Gus Edwards or Justice Hill. Brandon Coleman going to the Philadelphia Eagles. 
We just were on the clock here. We've addressed their defense. Let's let's go after the offense a little bit. Brandon Coleman, really like his game. I feel like he's being underrated a lot right now. Someone that really strong, really powerful. Kind of similar to Steve Avila, but I feel like he's a little more athletic even than Steve Avila. So you plug him in there at that left or right guard position. You can figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Put him in over there. And, and then, you know, when uh, Jason Kelsey retires, you got yourself uh, feel feel pretty good about that overall. So we're going to we're going to rock there. Josh Newton, Fig Newton's going over to the Kansas City Chiefs and get themselves another corner. You got to figure on maybe you fill that void in. If, if you're not ready with Joshua Williams, if you're not feeling confident, Josh Newton will be that guy to pair along with Trent McDuffie and Legereus Sneed, that three combination. Max Milton, another corner off the board for the 49ers. I like Demario Lenore. I think he's a good corner. Ambry Thomas has been playing a good amount too and still a little suspect on that. So I'm just kind of figuring on, hey, Max Mellon, someone I'm a huge fan of. This guy is super twitched up, man. And he cuts on a dime, really fluid corner. You know, I don't know if, I think he's got good enough long speed too. I really, I like his speed a ton. Like he's got some of the Devin, he's got Devin Witherspoon type of athleticism and traits. So maybe he doesn't have like crazy 4-2 speed, but like he's got that explosive gear where he can just boom and snap. He comes downhill in a hurry, man. Uh, kind of like Kamari, I mean, Kamari Lassner and him are different, you know, prospects, but uh, Max Mellon, I feel like, is one of the most twitched up explosive athletes in this class. Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle from Arizona, going to go here to Miami. They need offensive line, and Jordan Morgan, now he has, no, I don't know if he's actually played right tackle in his career, but I don't really care at this point. Taron Armstead has been injured so much that they could address offense line just no matter what. And I think Jordan Morgan could really help them out. Honestly, if he was healthy, if it were no red flag concerns with the injuries, and you're saying, oh, no, Miami Dolphins are going to draft another injury-prone offensive line or get another injury-prone offensive lineman, I'm not that worried about it. But it is something we have to monitor. And that's why he's not in the first round because I think he's he's got first-round traits and tools. He's looked really good so far. I watched the Mississippi State game. looked really good. Jonah Monheim going here from USC to Dallas. Let's go get some offensive line help here as well. And Dallas, they need they need some more help at that guard position. Tyler Smith figured to move over to that left tackle spot long term. Monheim can play a tackle. I mean, he's been playing a left tackle for them. But I think maybe more naturally he puts in over at that left guard position. And you keep that offensive line rolling. They need depth in general on that front. Jalen McMillan, another one of my favorite receivers in this class. The more I watch McMillan, the more I love him, man. Him and Lad McConkey, what's it with those slot receivers? It just kind of is what it is. But McMillan is insane. He's so, so good. Really good route runner. He's got good short area twitch. And I just think he's going to be able to be a great slot weapon for, for Josh Allen and company. So now you got Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs. Jalen McMillan. I know there's still some rumors going on with Stefan Diggs. Will he be here much longer? You got Gabe Davis being a free agent. Let's add another piece in here. I think Jalen McMillan can be that. We're going to go on to round number three, though. Next, stick around if you want to. You don't have to. We can more do more commercial breaks if you want. Let's get into round number three. As we got six fingers, something like that. But three, three apiece. We got Braylon Allen up next. And we're going to go and take him on this running back room, which James Conner's been really good. However, they're really thin. And long-term wise, maybe Braylon Allen ends up being that guy. I feel like he's only 19 years old. Maybe comes back another season. But so, so talented. Can take a little pressure off this offense. Even got Caleb Williams. Have a good run game. Trying to improve this team overall. Just adding missing pieces. I feel like Braylon Allen's going to help out this team so much. So here's a little shocker. Jordan Travis. One of my guys as well. I'm a huge fan of Jordan Travis. But I have to be realistic and everything like that and, and put in my bias. It's a, it's a mock drafter out there. But I, I will say this. I'm a huge fan of Jordan Travis. He's smaller. I get it. Doesn't quite have the maybe the crazy arm strength, but he's super accurate, insanely mobile. And I just love his his, his game, you know, ability, game-wrecking ability. Dude, I don't know what it is about Jordan Travis. He just always seems to show up. So... With that being said, work on the decision making a little bit. You get somebody to kind of just put a little little nudge, a little pressure as I was talking about in the first round. You know what I'm saying? Just a little slide action just in case Justin Fields isn't happy, doesn't play well, whatever the situation may be. The rumors swirling, all that ET entertainment. I don't know ET entertainment tonight. ET, I don't know what it's called, but I don't pay attention to that stuff, man. Jordan Travis, this ain't the Kardashian show. This is uh, some other crazy show, actually. My Kardashian show probably is better. Jordan Travis, though, is going to be the pick here. Just like I said, a little bit of a, a little bit of a pressure. 
Jamin Dumas Johnson from Georgia, one of my favorite linebackers in this class. Got to take him to this Jets team. Yeah, whatever. But I feel like the value at this point, this is where he's going to end up being valued. I mean, if N'Kobe Dean falls, there were some injury things. But Jamin Dumas Johnson, going to be that long-term replacement for C.J. Mosley. I feel like he can fit right in to that middle linebacker, a leadership role for this team. Tyreek, Tyreek Williams from Ohio State, going to add some more interior presence for this Raiders team, which is kind of in a rebuild in general on their defense. So I feel like they can upgrade from a lot of the guys. This is this is a big pairing to kind of look at for the future. Get yourself somebody who adds in some pass rush upside, but I think right away he can be a good run defender with his uh, block shedding capabilities. Then we go on to Jack Sawyer, also from Ohio State. We got a little run, and they're going to add some more defense of line help. With Utergros Matos being a free agent, maybe they don't bring him back. I think Jack Sawyer can fit right in there as a, a solid Sam Hubbard type of player. I think he's going to be a really good solid, solid edge. I think Sawyer is a really good player. I don't know if he's a high-end, you know, crazy upside prospect, but, like, he checks off all the tools. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just – there's all the tools are checked. He may not be an ex super explosive or dynamic athlete, but he's a good athlete, solid, and, you know, he knows how to get after the quarterback. So I really like Jack Sawyer just all around. I think he's a really safe prospect in this class. And you got Brian Burns, so you have your number one. You got yourself a number two in Jack Sawyer. Mike Sandra still he's a number one he's a number one slot corner in the league in my eyes at least potential in Arizona I just say this take good players I feel like that's what I'm trying to do and I understand some of the positional value saying well we got to attack the edge we got to attack you know maybe the outside corner position maybe the the offensive tackle position even though they'll hopefully be okay there now at this point with DJ Hey, Humphreys, maybe they get out of that contract at some point, but um, I, I still just going after good players. I feel like Jerzon Newton, Roma Dunze, Braylon Allen, Mike Sandra still, this is how you rebuild. Just get really talented players, and there are still some important positions. And we're going to get after the quarterback with Jerzon Newton, Roma Dunze, a great pass catcher. You got Caleb Williams. Oh, I mean, that's unbelievable. And Braylon Allen's going to help them out a lot in the run game. And Mike Sandra still is going to be super impactful in the slot. Remember, more and more top tier receivers are playing in the slot. Sandra still is one of the twitchiest corners in this draft. He is an exceptional cover. And he's also really good in run defense as well for his size, only being 5'10, 182. And just a really, really ferocious corner. Then we go on to Audric Estime going to Indiana, keeping it hometown local, right? Got to go with that local pick here. Estime, he has been a bully running back this season. He's like a little bowling ball with his explosiveness too. Really been impressive this season. And, and if Jonathan Taylor doesn't re-up, if they end up trading him, there's a little speculation with this. I get that. But Estime can be a good replacement for JT. Dante Coleone, the godfather. Let's make a deal like you can't refuse. And Coleone to me is a is just he's he is your definition of a great nose tackle and what you look for in a nose tackle. He is so good at two gapping. He is he's got that lateral twitchiness while also being low to the ground. I just love his game so so much. And I think he can get after the quarterback, too, as a pass rusher. In Denver, they need to continue to beef up that interior defensive line. I don't know if, you know, DJ Jones long-term. I mean, get somebody else besides Zach Allen on that front. You got Jonathan Harris, I believe, playing a good amount of snaps right now. So I feel like that could be addressed a little bit with Gante Coleon fits in with Zach Allen. Jasheen, Jasheen Davis from Wake Forest. This is a guy who reminds me a lot of like a Derek Hall type of player, that mean one arm bull rush. He's got some nice explosiveness, solid length profile, good explosiveness off the line. And for the G-Men, I just felt like this was kind of the best available player. And their defense, you know, I know their offense is kind of, the, you know, maybe the bigger area. Just maybe couldn't quite fit, you know, with some of the run on offense alignment we've had. And, you know, also I think that they need to address some of this offensive line with free agency because they have a lot of youth on their offensive line. Maybe you add in a, a veteran offensive lineman to kind of help out a little bit in that regard. And it didn't go running back either, even though running back could be a spot too. Maybe go with like a Bucky Irvin here. to, But I feel like that'd be a little redundant with Eric Gray. So I went ahead and just took kind of the best available prospect on defense. And Jasheen Davis, it's not like, I mean, you could add a little bit of depth there by Naziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau. They could use another guy in that rotation. I feel like in the third round, Jasheen Davis has a ton of upside, and, and I think he's going to be a really good player. On Bullard, next up here to the Green Bay Packers, we get in a slot corner slash hybrid safety. He's been playing safety this year, but he can play in the slot. 
And you got Keyshawn Nixon, a free agent. It's like they could use more safety up in general because who knows? Maybe they don't bring back, to, you know, Darnell Savage. He's been injured a lot too. So they could use some depth there in that safety room. And Bullard gives you a lot of creativity and, and versatility. So I, I like Javon Bullard a lot. Just feel like kind of the best available as we revamp that back end with Tyler Newbin and Javon Bullard. Nazir Stackhouse getting after the quarterback a little bit. We're going to talk about his teammate here real soon, who I like a ton, another one of my guys. But Nazir Stackhouse, super strong, going to be that nice run defender to fill in that Devon Gotchik's role for the long haul. That's the way I see it. Get a little cheaper there. Nazir Stackhouse can fit that role up in the middle. Then Johnny Wilson, he's a beast. He's a monster. He's that six foot seven dude that just yeah, throw it up to him, man. And, and Baker Mayfield's going to be throwing his way. You don't bring Mike Evans back? Well, you got Johnny Wilson out here who we can throw the ball up to. So that's kind of what I'm figuring. Go get yourself maybe that Mike Evans. I know that's tough, but try to get a Mike Evans replacement here and Johnny Wilson. Junior Colson going to be the next pick here at 77, the Wolverine. Let's add in that one-two punch there with Jameen Davis. This would be a mean wrecking machine hopefully at least but adding some pieces here on day two on the defense with Braylon Trice and Junior Colson to kind of round out this defense they've you know added a ton in the secondary now we add a ton in the middle and also off the edge then we go on to Jason Marshall 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 Jr. from Florida nice solid linear athlete Good corner on the inside, can fill in that Jeffrey Okuda role. You got A.J. Terrell and, uh, and company, so that would be a nice one-two, hopefully, combination for the future. Kai Wingo up next here for the Detroit Lions at pick number 79. The six foot one, 295-pounder is someone who's been able to get out, gonna get out of the pass rusher. He's been really the most consistent pass rusher with Mason Smith still getting healthy, being suspended early on. They haven't been using you know, Perkins as much off the air. They need to get him pass, rushing the passer, but Makai Wingo has been their most consistent pressure guy on that defensive front and he's going to be someone where he fits in you got Broderick Martin at nose Levi Unzurike trying to use him in pass rush roles Makai Wingo with his more of a burst and athleticism he's going to be someone that can help get out for the pass right passer as well as Levi Unzurike at least that's the hope right still might need to bring somebody into in free agency but this is heading in the right direction at least that's that's the hope with Chop Robinson and Makai Wingo and and all sorts of things. Now we go on to Zach Frazier, center from West, West Virginia. They need offensive line help, so that's what we're going to do here. I know we, we waited until the third round. They're going to need to address this also in free agency. But just the way the board fell out and some other players that I really like. So we're going offensive line here. He can fill in for Hoya for it, who... He's kind of trying to fill in there, but it's brutal. So they need interior offensive line help in all kinds of ways. And this is going to be a step in the right direction with Zach Frazier and that his athleticism that he brings to the table. Paris Johnson, Zach Frazier, seems like they're trying to get a little more athletic on that front. Keep Will Hernandez around at right guard. At least you got something there on that right side. Then you got Taron Arnold here from Alabama. He's a corner that I actually think is still a little underrated. I know he didn't have the greatest game versus Texas, but it wasn't a bad game. He had the PI. Overall, he's a really fluid corner, especially for his size. I, I like him a lot. He could probably even play safety, too, for this team if they wanted to convert him into that role, kind of like a Minka Fitzpatrick situation. He has similar sort of athletic traits to Minka, but he's someone who is really feisty, especially on in-breaking routes, on slants and stuff like that. He even covers some of those routes better than Kool-Aid McHistory at times. And he is just a really good prospect and someone to keep an eye out on, especially on day two, is a, is a guy who could really develop and hone his skills. If he does choose to come out this class, he could still come out still just a junior. So uh, keep an eye on Arnold, but he's someone that can fill into that secondary go along with Joey Porter Jr. And I feel like they complement each other skill set wise. Warren Brenson, this is the other Georgia defense lineman I was talking about earlier. I am a huge fan of Brenson. He is super good at getting after the quarterback. I don't know if that was even a, a language dictionary phrase. Don't get on me, English teachers. Like, this is totally BS. But Brenson is a guy who really gets after the quarterback with that swim move he's got. He's just explosive off the line. And that's something I think the Chargers could really use. Another bolt on that front. And that's what you get more on the interior. That's what they need. Somebody who can come out, kind of take the pressure off of Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, get some interior pressure. You got Tui Tu Pelotu who can play on the inside and outside. But Warren Brenson more is a traditional defensive tackle up on that front to one of my guys though Muma Jung Meta from Wisconsin super underrated player as well this guy from Wisconsin is a run defending fiend he's all over the place now while he doesn't have some of the athleticism that Colgin or you know Mondin or Barrett Carter have he makes up for with instincts 
and ferocity in tackling. He's got he's a really good tackler. He's a good blitzer too. Gets after the quarterback really, really well. He has the block shedding strength. Like you talk about old school mentality, get off of defensive linemen. Muma can do that. And what a great name. Muma, the mummy this season. They need that piece if Anthony Rocker doesn't get re-signed. You got Shane Taki Taki. He's not a bad player or nothing, but they could use another piece at that linebacking core. And JOK can at least cover in that coverage role, right? On to Quinian Mitchell here, going to the Rams at pick number 84. Really good zone corner. Very instinctual. He's got good explosiveness too coming downhill. So he's someone that comes in here, helps out this cornerback room, which is still, you know, it's really young. And maybe some guys like will develop like Darian Kendrick or Trey Tomlinson, et cetera, et cetera. But for the time being, I want to I wanna continue to add to the secondary because I feel like they need help. And hey, if nothing else, I actually think Mitchell could convert to safety. He plays so much off coverage. He's used to playing in the back end a ton. I like him, though, a ton as, as a corner. And especially in this scheme, I think he's going to be a perfect fit for them. Rook Ro Rojo down the boat, gently down the stream. We're going to take him on this defensive front for the Bengals. Need some more interior presence with BJ Hill getting a little older and also DJ Reed. Now it's a different role than DJ Reader, but Rook Ro Rojo is someone who could fit into that BJ Hill sort of vibes down the line as you develop him and whatnot. He's chiseled up too as a good pass rusher. Sticking with Clemson, Andrew Mukaba going to the Seahawks at number 86. He plays slot corner, can also play safety, and they love their safeties in Seattle. This guy, though, to me, can play in the slot for Kobe Bryant. You can kind of, depending on the packages, depending on who you're playing, whether you're going against, you know, big tight ends or slippery corner, slippery receiver, should I say. I think he gives you someone else to be a cover man in that secondary, which is still trying to get better. Then we get to DJ James, Auburn corner. Someone also very ferocious. He's going to be a guy that gets in your face at the line of scrimmage and attacks you up front right at the beginning. Love his man coverage ability. You pair him along up in this secondary. I mean, you still have Dorian Williams. Keep him around, right? But he can be a good developmental piece here in the secondary for them with Campbell. Tyson Campbell, should I say. And, you know, in the slot, hey, I think DJ James could also play in the slot early on in his career. And that way you can, you know, if you don't re-sign uh, Trey Herndon, who has played well this season. Overall, though, still looking to build the secondary some more. Juice Wells. We add in some juice into this receiving core, which they don't need a ton. I, they'll say they've got a good receiving core. And you combine Jameer Gibbs as a receiver, too. Juice, though, is going to give him that possession style of receiver on the outside. Someone who can be that ball winner. If they don't bring back Josh Reynolds, then Juice Wells can be that piece to fill into that role or he's someone that can develop into that role to go along with JMO and Amon Ross St. Brown. Then we got Troy Fontanu from Washington going back with Seattle at number 89 now and I'm just going to get an interior offensive lineman just to add some more offensive line help because you do look at this offensive line maybe um what's his name Anthony from uh, LSU last season not Bradford. Is it Bradford? I think it's something like that. Anthony Bradford. So maybe he can develop at that right guard position. But Troy Fontanu can give you at least a little bit more depth to go along. He can also play swing tackle. So just getting a little more offensive line depth because I feel like they've you know had some injuries and stuff like that. So always getting a little bit more depth. Maybe that's a free agency situation. But I just feel like Fontanu here at this point was a good kind of value for them. And I'm hoping El Olumitimi can develop at that center position. So that's why I didn't go center at this spot. Felt like Fontanu, Fontanu was the best available for them. And maybe you can play center. Who knows? Chyler Davis. As I'm getting <laughs> my words all mixed up now. It's all going to shambles. It's the end of the third round. My voice. Hey, we're having some fun, man. I'm having some fun. I love mock drafts. And there's so much fun. I, I mean, before I did this whole YouTube thing, I was just doing mock drafts all the time because they're just so much fun. So I always enjoy them. Tyler Davis is going to be someone here on this interior for the Baltimore Ravens who can really help them out, add some more depth. While he may not have the high-end tools of some of these other you know, defensive interior linemen, I just feel like he's going to be a really, really solid player in, in the NFL. He just checks off all the boxes and what he brings as a run defender. He can get after the passer. May not be the biggest guy or the fastest guy, but he's got enough juice to get in the backfield combined with pass rush tools. Where I'm like, yo, this is going to be a good rotational player to go along with Broderick Martin and Justin Manabuki. Then we got Christian Mahogany on the offensive line for the Houston Texans. They've had a lot of injuries, and you also look at the future. Even Shaq Mason is getting a little bit older. So just add in some more help with, you know, Christian Mahogany, who's a really, really good offensive lineman. And if he were healthy, didn't have the ACL coming off the ACL, you could argue this guy could be an even a, 
a back end of the first rounder. He was getting hyped to be in a back end of the first rounder for good reason. He's a really good offensive lineman. He's strong. He's got enough lateral agility in a phone booth. And he's a technician as well. So he's a guy where... Yeah, may not be the, the craziest athlete in space. He's not going to, you know, go out 20 yards down the field and maul dudes. I mean, he can maul dudes up front, but he's more of a phone booth guy. However, they could use him up on that front to go along with Kenyon Green for the long haul. Tro uh, Troy Franklin here, wide receiver, really good value in my eyes. So I'm just taking a receiver. There's a lot of really good receivers. I will say some players I didn't even highlight in this draft, like Torrey Horton, who he's definitely Rosen, Rosen into, not Josh Rosen, but he's he's risen up into the third round conversation in my eyes. Really good deep threat. But Troy Franklin, I figured let's go with Franklin. And he also gives you a good deep threat. Just someone else to add into this Chiefs second, or the receiving core to add some more help. I still need to see this young receiving core develop as the season goes along until I determine how big of a need it is. For right now, though, we'll add a receiver in Troy Franklin. Super talented deep threat from Oregon. Lad McConkey, another one of my guys. I really like Lad McConkey from Georgia. Super tough after the catch. Someone get the ball in his hand. Just let him go because this guy can break tackles. He's really good in space like his route running ability he can fit into the slot there if they don't bring back um um Juwan johnson so I, I just felt like that was kind of something they could look at towards the future get another weapon in here and if it's a perfect fit with his yak ability in this offense M malachi corley he is super dynamic as well i haven't done a full tape study on malachi corley yet but he is extremely from what the film i have watched super dynamic with the ball in his hands Another guy I was thinking about here was Jamari Thrash from Louisville. Another guy that needs you a full scouting report on, but I've watched a couple games this season from him at Louisville, and he has been super dynamic. But Corley is going to be another piece. Just get the ball in his hands. He is so electric. And if Brandon Cooks, you know, you wanted to let go of him at some point, or just in the future, I think Corley can be a developmental piece down the line. Maybe, not again, not the biggest guy, but the tallest guy should i say but he's rocked like he's built really really well he's built kind of like a running back in, in ways so i think he's going to be a really good piece in that sort of maybe brandon kicks cook side sort of role then we got to aaron lewis i feel like he's a super underrated guy someone on this bills defensive line just kind of adding some more depth because they did trade boogie basham and if they don't bring back leonard floyd or whatever like i feel like he's just someone that comes onto their defensive line and gives them some more edge talent to go along with greg Rousseau, von miller who's having trouble staying healthy at this point in his career so I felt like Aaron Lewis, he's really an insane pass rusher, always getting after the quarterback, it seems like. I do think he needs to work on his leverage, especially in the run game. A little bit tall, can get a little high up, but really talented pass rusher. Another pass rusher who I think is super underrated as well, and everyone talks about Chop Robinson, but Idissa Isaac from uh, Penn State, he's really good at getting after the quarterback, super explosive. I actually feel like he was more consistent than Chop Robinson last year in ways. I don't think he's got the crazy explosive get off that Chop has, but he's good at getting after the pass rusher. And I could see this guy being a, a solid round two dude. So keep an eye out on it just to Isaac, depending on his season. But I think he's locked in for me, at least at the third round pick at lowest at this point with his traits. So I'm taking a chance on another pass rusher. Just need a little bit of depth on that line, right? You've got your, your starters. This is just a guy who's going to be able to come out on third downs if Trevon Walker's playing inside on rush packages or whatever to be a nice compliment with Josh Allen. Moose Muhammad, receiver, going here to Philadelphia, living up into his dad's name, like really good receiver in his own right, really talented, just catches everything. May not be the super athletic guy, but he's got short area quickness and he's going to be a great slot receiver. And to pair along with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, he's just going to, you know, kind of add the cherry on top. So he's going to be able to plug right into the slot and give them a really reliable hands catcher target up on that in that slot position you know when you got dallas got a receiving core spencer rattler the rattlers arrived we got oh snake action something like that but i think this guy's gonna be a super steal for somebody rattler gets a lot of hate but yeah and i understand why you know there's off the field stuff people complain about i think he's really matured and overall i'm not super worried about that he's a young man figuring out his way to me spencer rattler he's cleaning up the decisions definitely a step in the right direction for me He's got all the talent. We all know that. And he looks way better in the pocket this year against a South Carolina offensive line that has not been good. Let's be real. It's not been good. He's been without Juice Wells for most of the season. He held them into that Georgia game as long as he could. He made a couple of bad decisions at the end of that game. He had like one other throw earlier in the game that it, I thought was a little harem square him. Overall, dude's really good, man. Really, really talented. I want receiver like Garrett or I'm forgetting his, how to say his name, but he's good too. 
However, I mean, without Juice Wells, it has been a bit more a challenge, especially against a Georgia secondary where Kamara Lassner was destroying dudes out there. And, and their defensive line was just, it was no, I mean, their offense line was no match against Georgia's defensive line. But Rattler have been really impressive to me this season. So I'm keeping an eye on him and just adding a little bit of depth there just in case. They've had so many injuries at the quarterback position. So I'm just adding a piece to, if nothing else, just be a backup for the San Francisco 49er team. We're going to keep it with the 49ers. Pick number 99. We're almost done with this draft. Tate Radlich. Someone who I think is super strong, really good pass protector, and that's what they need, right? I think he's, you know, a decent run blocker. That's not maybe his game, all right? I think he still needs some more refinement with his technique in the run game, getting a little bit lower with his leverage. But he's a really good pass protector, super strong upper body. People have to go around him, and which can happen, all right? He's not maybe the most fleet of foot getting out in space, but he's got enough lateral agility where he can, he can stay in a phone booth, and I feel confident about him. So you plug him in there, one of those guard positions. Hey, I think even Aaron Banks is not someone that's a guaranteed starter, but Spencer Brad, uh, um, Burford and, and Aaron Banks just look to maybe upgrade that offensive line in general. Maybe move Burford in at, at center long term for Jake Brendel. You keep Brendel around, you still you know signed him on contract. And then we go on to our final pick, Bryce Foster. Speaking of a center, that's what we're going to do here with the Buffalo Bills. If Bryce Foster was healthy, I feel like he'd be a second round player. He's got all the tools and the traits. Super strong, decent enough athleticism to get the job done. He just, he kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Creed Humphrey. He's in that similar mold. And for the Buffalo Bills, I'm looking at a long-term developmental center for this team for Mitch Morris. So I think Bryce uh, Foster, let him get fully healthy for a season. And then, you, you know, kind of like a red shirt year. And then next year he can maybe take over for Mitch Morris. And then that way you get cheaper, younger, and I think maybe even better down the line. That is it here for day two mock draft. Let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed. My name's G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. Keep it cooling out there.